How do fears within a character raise the stakes? Fears are everything. Fears are also something that we all have. And when you look at what is the character's dream versus what is their biggest fear. When we look at the biggest fear, we're looking at the consequence in the idea of how the internal stakes are affecting the character and how they make choice. There are many writers that don't set up the fear. And when you fail to set up the fear, then you fail to set up the internal and or external stakes at a level where the audience identifies. Again, I, fear is something very universal in all of us. I always say to writers, what is the worst thing that can happen if the goal is not achieved? And that goes into fear. Can we explore incorporating the past, present, and future into story? Yes. The past is the earlier wound. And when you're looking at the past, it can be an event like in, uh, in the show, The Split, when you have the, the inciting incident be a father who returns after a 30-year absence, then you are in immediate recognition of the void in the familial members because of this choice. So the past in that situation is defined by an event versus uh, the past you can also identify by uh, someone who's just emotionally absent. You can have a parent who is an alcoholic and there is no specific event, but there is a wound that happens from the emotionally unavailable parent. So that goes into the past. And then you, the present is Something happens, which creates the why now that we are entering the story when we are with the inciting incident that splits open the earlier wound. And that something that happens is awakens what happened earlier in life. And that with that awakening, the character is loosely aware, but through the pursuit, they become more aware of the earlier wound. I've seen structures that work incredibly well when you have the earlier wound, when we feel how the inciting incident awakens that wound, then we understand the void. And when we understand the void, that again goes into creating empathy and rooting interest uh, with the character. Then with the future, you are looking at, will the character transform or won't they transform? Did you create the right external plot for the character to become aware of what was holding them back? And is the character in the mindset that they want to heal? And you have characters that we feel the full transformation and you have characters that you are left with that you feel like they didn't learn. And there's value in both because in the world, there are people in both mindsets. Staying within the arc of growth, What's quieting the mind of the sort of the, the noisy survival mindset? I like that term. Yes. Anyway. I have come into the recognition, the mindset thing was a new thing for me in looking at character and character dynamics and recognizing that in life, we are in the intellectual mind, we are in the survival mind, or we are in the intuitive mind. 
And for the majority of our lives, and we are very often rotating from one mindset to the other. For the majority, depending on the life phase and where you're entering with the character of our lives, we are in survival mindset. So being in the survival mindset, there's more to play with, with the flaws, with the vulnerability, and think about how do you move the character into the intuitive mindset? How, what can happen to the character that creates the arc of growth that moves them into the intuitive mindset? Another parallel that I often think about, like when you think in life, how we are all brought up on the idea of codependency and the I, wherever there's hierarchy, which there is in the family unit from the time we're born. And then we go into the work world and we go into the scholastic world and there is a hierarchy and hierarchy creates codependency. And the, the job for people is to figure out how do you go from codependency to interdependency. And the, the value, and I think it used to feel like independency was the key to everything, but then the recognition was interdependency. So when you're looking at how do you move from the mindsets, it's a similar thing that all has to do with the arc of growth of the character. How could we show a codependent character versus an interdependent character versus an independent character? So the codependent character is often a character with uh, an alcoholic parent, uh, uh, someone where the one of the parents has been absent. So there is a need that is so connected with uh, the comfort of another person where they cannot distinguish the difference in, in the value of the codependent character or person is the untransformed place in a person's life or a character's life. So it gives you somewhere to go. The independent person can also be looked at as a character that has a weakness or a flaw if they're too independent that that is creating an isolation in a different way an independent person can also be looked at as a plus uh, in that they're not dependent on other people and then the interdependent person character is the transformed character who has gone through the emotional work of what transpires in the story through the actions, obstacles, stake sequence that leads them to a transformed state. So you can go from a character who is flawed and codependent and have a pursuit that allows them an opportunity to change. And then at the climax, they become aware of the flaw and the choice is in becoming aware of the flaw, are they going to make a conscious choice when it comes to the resolution or are they going to stay in the flawed thinking? So if I were to put labels, and these are my labels, uh, on, on a codependent character, needy, in, independent character, selfish, and intra or interdependent, uh, would be more balanced? Yes, okay. perfectly put. Okay, so yes. that's how I could show yes. these sort of phases that are okay. yeah. interesting. And it all has to do with there's an opportunity for growth. And codependency, like a flaw, is something that is in our lives all the time because of the hierarchy. of. And the interesting thing for me, I it wasn't until I went through a divorce and someone said, have you ever looked at codependency? And my immediate reaction was, I'm not codependent. 
maybe he was codependent. And then I, I read a book, on, I think it was called Codependency No More, and, and it described codependency as needing someone to need you. And I was like, I'm codependent. How wild. So I understand the transformation because I've gone through it. I've done the work to understand how do I go from uh, the feeling of the hierarchy through the system that society sets up and then starting my own business and not having the agenda of others is part of the outcome, only having the agenda of how do we get the story to the best place possible. All of that emotional work is part of what led to my transformation. Yeah, and, and just like in life, roles can change. Someone can be codependent and then be the one that's sort of sought after by the codependent. Yes. Our characters can change too. Maybe, yes. Maybe they're codependent in one realm, but then they're actually the ones being sought after by a codependent in another, you know? Yes. So. And there's value. Like the codependent person is certainly not... And a bad person, it's not, it, it's 98%, I think it was the stat, or 90% of society is set up on codependency. So part of our life process and challenge in life having to do with mindset is how do we move from the survival mindset of needing someone to need you into the mindset that you are enough. The flawed thinking, the negative narrative, I'm not enough, I'm not lovable, I'm, you know, I don't deserve. And how does the story transform that thinking and bring you to the idea of interdependency and the idea of transformation? Sure, some of our most lovable characters. I mean, you could say Bridget Jones is probably yes. very yes. <laughs> good offended. Exactly. Exactly. And, and Great White example. Lotus. Yes. Yeah, the, the very Jennifer strong Coolidge. example. Yes. <laughs> yes, very strong but example. But then she can flip yeah. on you and, and, and start. Yeah, so, so she's real interesting. I'm not sure what her you know, what they would put in the DSM, whatever it is, five now yes. or whatever the book is, but what her classic case would be. But some very interesting stories have all been built around a, code, a codependent character. Oh, exactly. Because you think about what happens to a character when they lose their comfort blanket, which is a person, what happens to them, which we all do in life. We lose, we move on from from you know being in the family unit to going to college to the idea of moving away from and as I, I always remember this saying which I loved that that kind of frames the idea when I was at Spelling Television we did a show called uh, Queen Supreme and there was a quote that one writer used in an episode that we spend the first half of our lives running away from home and the second half trying to get back. Oh, that's great, isn't it? 